Hi, my name is Steve Houston, and you probably already know that if you've been in this channel before. If you haven't, on this channel I discuss the IMOs, I discuss final expense, mortgage protection, really all things financial services, annuities, IULs, advanced products. We provide the facts with documentation, and we allow you to decide what's best for you. So this week, I want to kind of continue on what we talked about last Wednesday. Remember, every Wednesday we do a training topic, and... Um, we got a little bit behind because we're redoing the studio, redoing some lighting, buying some new lights. This YouTube stuff can get expensive. So uh, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button below so we can get more people uh, involved in the channel and um, let me know it's worthwhile and you're really getting something out of it. I do appreciate the comments uh, on the videos and even more importantly, I appreciate the people that have called in um, and talked to me on the phone and just you know left a voicemail, whatever, and really talking about how much value you're getting out of these videos. That really touches me. I'm grateful for that. And it uh, just encourages me to keep doing this uh, because, as you know, there's no money involved in it. So uh, it doesn't pay well. But I, but I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, are with different IMOs that do, do, do not provide any training uh, or support. The IMOs don't provide the support. It's more of a network marketing model. Your upline doesn't ha has never sold an application. His upline has never sold an application. And most likely their upline has never sold an application, whatever it may be. And I really want and have a huge desire to succeed in this business. And that was really my primary motivation to continue this channel on uh, after our initial video a couple of years ago when we uh, were leaving our previous IMO. So uh, I saw that there was a great need out there. And I think that's still true, obviously, by the fact that you folks are commenting, you're calling me, you're emailing me, um, and you're sharing the video out. I go by the likes. Um, that on the video and also again how many times you folks are sharing it out to other agents and getting the word out that there is a way a, a resource that if you cannot leave you cannot make the decision to change to go with somebody it's not necessarily a network marketing IMO that does provide agency support because I really think that's the game changer and, and again I don't want to get off in the weeds on that today but so many people discount the fact that you need to be coached and mentored at least early on by somebody that's still going out there putting the uniform on getting out there and doing exactly what they're telling you that you should be doing, not just telling you, but they're doing it. They're leading from the front and they're putting their name on an application. That's the guy that you want to be coached and mentored by. So uh, this week I want to kind of continue. I got some questions uh, on the last uh, video about uh, I, the IUL bucket, and I'm not sure that I clarified or explained this part of it enough. So I wanted to kind of uh, tell you about how to analyze uh, someone's policy if you're in the home. And, uh, and you want to see if their policy is funded correctly. Again, if they're paying that target premium uh, for too long. Now, it's designed financial trouble, what have you. You need to take a couple of months off, um, loss of a job, whatever. You can maintain the policy by paying the target premium. But if you pay that target premium too long, you're not funding the policy correctly. So I wanted to go over that uh, with you again today so you can kind of understand if you're in the home, you can have them pull out. Maybe you have an IUL yourself that you want to check. I have several for myself that uh, I just, as a matter of fact, last week asked for the statement from the carrier to find out exactly where I am in terms of my uh, savings account uh, in my IUL bucket and to find out if I've... Uh, if I, you know what I what I have there to uh, to pull from, and my cash value is building properly, all that stuff. So the first thing you want to do is have them pull the statement out, right? They get a statement from the insurance company that kind of tells them uh, where they're at in, in terms of how much money the cash value they have in their in their policy. So have them pull out the the, uh, the statement in front of you if they have it. You can pull yours out as well if you want to do this for a learning lesson. If you have an IUL, so now that you have the statement and you have the policy uh, in the home you can now compare it. And now what you want to do is look in the illustration, okay? It should be in the policy. It will tell you on any given year how much cash they should have in a policy. So let's just assume for this example for the, for the uh, video is that they're 12 years into their policy and they should have, you're looking at the, uh, the uh, illustration, they should have $15,000 in cash build up in their savings bucket, right? And then you look at the insurance company's statement and they say that they have 8,000, okay? There's a problem, right? They're underfunding the policy. They've been making the target premium for too long and not making the premium payment long enough, right? So they have not built up enough savings to maintain this policy as the cost of insurance goes up, right? Okay, at this point, they're $4,000 short in the policy, and this policy most likely well, it's not going to stay in force until age 100 unless they start putting more money into it. 
fairly quickly. So again, just so you understand from the last video, if you haven't watched the last video, go back and watch it. It's called the IUL bucket. This is called the IUL bucket troubles, right? Part two. So what the agent did is they minimum funded the policy by telling them they could pay only the target premium, which is going to cause a problem down the road. It will not be enough as again, the cost of insurance. Now in review, as I said on the last video is, you know, when you start paying the policy, as you get older, the cost of insurance, of, of insuring you basically, because you're getting older and may even have medical problems, but let's just leave it at that. Just because you're getting older, the cost of the insurance to keep that policy in effect goes up. For example, if you tried to get $100,000 today at age 45, it'd be, let's just say, $100 for $100,000. I'm just throwing those numbers out there. If you come back at age 47, right, same individual, same medical conditions, but now you're two years older, the cost of insurance for $100,000 is going to be $150. It's going to be higher. Well, that still happens even though you're level premium. Even though you're level premium to age 100, the cost of insurance is still going up. And the way they maintain that and keep these payments level, keep, keep your payments level across the whole term of the policy is, is they pull from your bucket, okay, your savings bucket, and they take that, what, the amount you have in your savings plus interest to, add, to keep these payments level to age 100. So if, if this bucket is not funded correctly, there's not enough money to pull from there, and as the insurance rises in cost, they run out of money in this bucket, okay? So what happens is if you have uh, on your statement, you're supposed to have 8,000 and on your illustration, 10 years, 12 years down the road, you're supposed to have uh, 15,000, you're short. You're at least uh, $6,000 in, in the hole, right? So it's not gonna stay in force. It's not enough money there because you've been paying the, the target premium for too long, right? So uh, there's a problem. And what happens is it blows up in a bad way. And so what happens is they get 10, 12 years down the road and the policy lapses, now they're much older, they could have medical conditions, which would be really tragic, or they could be uninsurable, right? Because the medical conditions have changed. Either way, it's gonna be substantially more expensive and they've lost any type of uh, tax-free uh, retirement savings they could have pulled this policy had they been told correctly. And a lot of times agents will go in there and try to replace a policy where you've sold it correctly, they come back in and said, hey, I can do it for 70 months, and they can, go back and watch my initial video, but they're underfunding the policy by telling them they can pay only the minimum premium. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So let me just kind of go through this real quickly. I gotta clean my board. We'll review how to do this properly. So sorry, Angela, I have to take off your nice little graphic here so I have room on my board to show everybody what we're talking about today. Okay, so there's no better way of doing that than doing it live, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this again, right? I'll do a smaller diagram as I did the last on the last video just so we can kind of refresh our memory. Okay? All right, now what's going to happen here is we're going to pay on this theoretically for 30 or 40 years. The premiums are going to stay level to age 100, okay? And as we, we're going to start out, the cost of insurance is $50. And it's rising, okay? Now, as we're paying into our IOL each month, we discussed in the last video that we're building up money into our savings bucket, okay? Now, in order to tell your clients how to set this up properly, they should be making the regular premium payment. If they can have to make the target premium to keep the policy in force, Let's just say they're losing their job or whatever. They can do that, but they don't want to do it for very long. What they really should do is they should, about every five years, you can make additional payment. You can increase your, your, the amount of money you're putting into this payment, into this IUL, okay? So over five years, maybe, maybe you're putting in, this, if the premium payments are $100, okay? You're doing 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. So you're now putting more money into the bucket, which will increase your savings account substantially that you have more money to pull from and you'll have more tax-free income to pull from this at age 65. Now you can go up about 50% higher than the, than the premium. Now I had a question the other day is can, can you just write a blank check and dump it in there? The IRS 
lot kind of clamp these things down a few years ago where they don't allow you to do that anymore. You can go about 50% more. So if you start at 100, you can probably go to 150 without getting in any trouble. If you start out at 400, you can probably go to 650 without getting in any IRS trouble, right? So about 50% more than what your premium started out to be, okay? Not the target premium, but the actual premium amount for that IUL policy. And so theoretically, as you get pay raises from your job, the best thing to do would be to, to add money to your uh, over and above. So now you're overfunding rather than minimum funding the policy. And by doing that, look what just happened to your savings bucket. Now rather than have this amount, this amount to pull from, now you, you have this to pull from. Okay? All this money is earning interest and your savings bucket is getting larger. So you're doing just the opposite by only increasing your premium payment by maybe $10 a year. Okay, so you go from, from 100 to 110, 120, 130, 140, 150 over you know, the lifetime of the policy. Maybe every five years you would increase it. So I hope that helps. Recapping this again in the home, pull, ask them to pull out their insurance uh, company's statement, pull out their policy because there'll be an illustration in that and see what their statement says they have in, the, in their savings account built up already. Compare it with what they should have with an illustration. If those two things don't match, well, I don't have my firecracker anymore, but there's a problem, okay? But when you're selling these things, sell, it, sell them correctly and tell them the target premium there is there in case they get into trouble, they can maintain the policy for a little while by making, making that minimum target premium. But really what they should be doing is every five years or so, increasing the amount, paying more than the premium, and keep this bucket, this savings bucket, building up and collecting interest. All right? All right, that's it. IUL bucket troubles. I hope we beat this subject to death enough. There's two videos on it so far. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section, email me, call me, uh, or text me, and we can have a conversation about it. But again, it's, it's twofold. It's how you look at what your client has already and compare that to make sure they're on the right track and also to make sure that uh, you sell your policies correctly, right? And you make sure that they understand that you can increase the amount you're putting in this policy uh, up to about 50% over and above the premium payment they start with. So if it's 100, they can go to 150, and they could do it in five-year increments, for example, right? And overfund the policy rather than minimum fund it and run into trouble. If you do that correctly, you'll have some happy customers. The IUL will perform very well, and they'll have a very large income to pull from tax-free on retirement, right? But you can also, again, use it to sell against the policy that they currently have if somebody went in there and sold them on the minimum target premium that's destined to blow up and fail. That's the whole point is they're on a racetrack to doom because it's going to blow up and uh, they don't know it. So as you know, do, do the right thing, uh, be a better agent, and fully explain to them how to set up the IUL properly and they'll be happy customers. All right. So have a great week. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And again, remember on Wednesdays, we're going to take a topic every week, a training topic in our agents series. And on Sunday, it's just random. It's whatever I'm getting a lot of questions on during the course of the week. If you have a question, put it in the comment section. Don't forget to press the uh, bell uh, right below, right here. Uh, that will give you instant notifications for live videos or when I put a new video up. Uh, hit the subscribe button. I'd be grateful. Put some comments in so that everybody can learn from the community. And uh, again, I appreciate, uh, do me a favor and share the video out. There's so many people out there that uh, I hear from each week that have no training and, and are discouraged and wanting to quit the industry. And that would be a shame. Bye-bye. Have a great week.